In these last three days, we have heard the gospel proclaimed by faithful brothers and sisters. And surely, we are in the times of refreshing and new renewal that have come from the presence of, God, of the Lord. As we come to the communion time, I would like to lead you in some thoughts concerning our Lord and Savior. In Matthew chapter 26, it, it is written, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And in another place, he said in Luke 22, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourself. For I say to you, Say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. This do in remembrance of me. These words are written on almost every communion table in every church in this country and in most of the world. And this is what we are going to do is remember Jesus. What a blessed time this is in remembering our Lord and I cannot think of no better time than us having sweet fellowship with the Lord and with his brethren. This is a high time when we can commune with our Lord and him speaking to us as we listen closely. We can hear, us, hear him giving us comforting words and encouraging words. A time of being refreshed and renewed in our faith and our commitment to our Lord. Let us begin by remembering when his ministry began. In Luke chapter 4, verse 16, and we read, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to pre preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And we remember another time when John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus in Matthew 11. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, to Jesus, Are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? Jesus answered them and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you see and hear. The blind see, 
the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus is still working with our Father in heaven, fulfilling his ministry. He is opening the eyes of the blind, healing those who are brokenhearted, cleansing the lepers, open the ears that can't hear, and raising the dead to life. And the gospel is preached to the poor, and he is making intercession for his children. He is bringing many sons to glory. We are remembering Jesus at this table. Before Jesus found us, we were the enemies of God. In Romans 5, 8, it says, But God demonstrated his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Colossians 1, 20, uh, 21 says, And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. We are no longer his enemies but we are his children, and we are able to come to his table and commune with him in remembrance of him. This is a privilege and an honor to be with him at his table. It's not our table, but it's his. And he invited us to come and commune with him. This is God at work in his son Jesus, bringing an alien race of people to God who were once hostile toward God and enemies. Not only did Jesus do this on the cross, but he put away all sin. In Hebrews 9, 27 says, but now once, at the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Do you remember where he found you? You were searching for something better. Some of us were lost and in prison. Some of us were blind, brokenhearted, dead to God, not able to hear the truth. Some of us were in other assemblies where we were. We wanted more or better than what we were getting. Remember, what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Acts. On the, uh, this is what he said. And hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell upon the face of the earth and determine the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if aptly they might feel after him and find him though he be not very far from every one of us. We were searching for God, and he found us. According to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God chose us and attracted us to Jesus, who found us, and now we are at his table in his kingdom in the midst of his enemies, enjoying sweet fellowship with him as we remember our Lord and Savior. Here are some more things to remember Jesus. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He came to do the will of God, knowing that God was not pleased with sacrifices and offerings for sin under the law. 
he also paid the price for our sins. In 1 John 2, we read, and he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And there, hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Remember when we came into Christ? We were cleansed from our sins. We were washed. We were sanctified. We were justified. And in the end, we will be glorified. Amen. When we came into Christ through baptism, he cleansed us and made us cleaner than anything could clean us, whiter than snow. David said, purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He made us clean so that we can be at his table. Not only did he make us clean, he opened the eyes of our understanding so that we can see by faith the purpose of God. In John 5.20 it says, And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He opened our ears so we can hear the gospel preached when it is being preached, and he is teaching us about the Father. Once we were dead to the things of God, and he raised us up to newness of life. He freed us from bondage. He took our sin away. He made us free to worship him and to serve him. He purged us from dead works. He gave us an inheritance. He is making intercession for us. He gave us peace with God, forgiveness of sin and his love, and he saved us from the wrath of God and much, much more. And at last, if we remain faithful, we will be counted worthy to stand with Christ before our great God in that day. These are just a few things to rem remember our Lord at his table. Let us at this time remember him. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come before you and gather around your table in joy and in thankfulness for what you have done. As you shed your blood for us, Lord, you paid our pr the price that we could not pay. Father, you, you are the manna that came down from heaven, the giver of life. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you have done for us. We rejoice at your table. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.